Okay, guys, here we go again. Back to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay, make sure you have your textbook notes and you've slept enough. Okay. So now we are going to three parts. Okay, we are still here in part one where we are talking about the build-up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. What have we established? We know why is Cuba important. There are two main things. Okay, politics political interest and economic interest okay and so now we are going to look at how and what the americans did in cuba and how did they respond we are going to be looking at part two okay um, in this lecture it is a and b okay on your notes it is here okay um, just these two parts, American political intervention as well as the Cuban Revolution, how they are related to each other. Okay, so here uh, in the uh, notes, it says there are two words, discreetly and overtly. Overtly means to be more obvious, to be more aggressive, whereas discreet is to be more careful, more subtle. Okay, um, Usually, when you're talking about discrete, we're talking about political manipulation, whereas overt, we're talking about military and economic actions. Okay? So, I say again, usually this is political manipulation, whereas overt, we are usually talking about economic or military, where I use my force more obviously. Okay? So, let's have a look at that. Um, a will lead into B, okay? So we know that why the Americans want to intervene and it will lead to the Ameri uh, Cuban Revolution. Okay, come, let's go. So we know that they have interests in Cuba, uh, economic as well as political. I keep restating this because then you will remember uh, how this works, okay? They intervene in Cuban politics to what end? To what end? To confirm... To ensure American influence. I want to make sure that the Cubans are following me. Okay? In 1912, even at the turn of the century, the American ambassador is de facto proconsul. What is a proconsul? Essentially, he is the ruler of America. Proconsul is a concept that comes all the way from uh, Roman times. Okay? Um, sort of like a, a substitute ruler. Okay? And then in 1933, what does it say? The American ambassador plotted with Cuban generals to overthrow the president. Wow, that sounds like some spy movie stuff, but that is actually what is happening. Okay, what does this tell you? This, both of this, there is a trend and it says that the USA will always take action to keep Cuba pro-USA, right? I want to keep them in my pocket. Okay, Cuban nationalists, of course, don't like this. Nationalists, they, they want Cuba as for Cubans. Okay, they want to remain independent. They want to be free of American intervention, which is, uh, well, very understandable. Okay, so what then happens? Okay, uh, by this time that we're looking at in the late 1950s, who is in charge of Cuba is this guy called Colonel Batista. Okay, Colonel Batista... He is the ruler before Castro. Okay. He is not a nice man. He is exploitative. He is an oppressor. He would uh, establish under the table relationships. So basically, he's corrupt. Lah. He's making money. He's um, um, selling off Cuban land cheap so that he can get a cut of the profits from the Americans. Okay. Uh, really not what the leader of a country should be doing. Okay. And he is tyrannical. Okay. You can imagine um, use of force, corruption. Okay. Uh, doesn't follow the law. Now, the USA, of course. You know, it seems like nobody should support him. But the USA is supporting him. Why? For a very simple reason, Batista is pro-USA. Okay? And why? Because they do not want to allow the Soviet Union any kind of space in their geopolitical backyard. Why, why, what are we talking about backyard? Backyard here, we're talking about the space behind me, right? Imagine, we remember where the USA is. The USA is here. 
Oops, we had San Jairo. Here is the USA. Here is North America. Where is their backyard? Their backyard is right here in Cuba. And they do not want the Soviet Union to have a space in Cuba which will allow them to uh, expand their communist influence. Okay, So um, what happens is that the USA continues to support Batista. So indirectly, the Cubans don't. They don't like Batista, but they also don't like the USA. Okay, Why does Batista's rule cause the Cuban Revolution? Let's have a look. Batista's rule is terrible. Okay, um, people are upset, they are unhappy, they will flock and to support whoever um, provides some means of resistance against the oppressor. Okay, so we have this guy called Fidel Castro, please go and read up the textbook. Okay, he led a guerrilla war. Okay, so he's fighting. Uh, what is a guerrilla war? It is a one sided asymmetric conflict where the people, um, shall we say, they're like freedom fighters, right? So the people are supporting them. It is quite hard. Nobody ever defeats a guerrilla force. Okay. Um, what happens is that in 1959, after three years of fighting, Castro finally does succeed. They remove Batista from power. This is known as the Cuban Revolution. Okay. But what is the problem? You know, if I'm the USA, let's think about it. If I'm the USA, well, I won't, can't I just support Cuba? Can't I just support Castro? You know, um, if I support Castro, then as long as I have him in my pocket, everything is good to go, right? I maintain my economic and political interests. But the problem here, remember, it is the Cold War. They suspect that Castro is a communist. If I'm the USA, I see a communist. I don't like communists, okay? Now, it is important to know at this point, uh, at this point, Castro is not yet communist. Okay, Castro is not yet communist. Okay, so how does the USA react? They do not like Castro. There is some tension. Okay, um, but what will happen is that if you look at your notes, it says that point 2C and 2D will intensify the tension. Okay, so why is the Cuban Revolution significant? Because it is a turning point. What is the reason behind the turning point? We will look at his, uh, Castro's policies and leadership in the next lecture. Okay, so the important takeaway for this lesson is that this way, huh? let me zoom in here. What is the sum up? Uh, US interests. They want to keep Cuba pro-USA, right? What does this mean? They support Batista. But then Batista is a terrible person, a terrible ruler. What will happen? There is a resentment, which then results in the Cuban Revolution. Okay, this is the chain of events which we must think about. So far so good? Okay, uh, next lecture we will look at what Castro actually did and how it affected the USA.